Ah, it's finally October. As you can see, I got bitten by a vampire. Uh, this isn't gonna work. These these are just things I bought from Walmart. Anyways, today we're gonna be doing a special episode of Stage Select. This time, it's Halloween theme. <laughs> <laughs> When I was younger, the world seemed infinite and endless. And I was scared of just about everything in it. Half of it was traumatic real-life experiences growing up, while the latter half was of course video games. I remember I was playing Resident Evil 2 and eventually giving up when I walked into the surveillance room, just monitoring the cameras and seeing Mr. X appear on them, and then him suddenly just bursting through the room to mutilate you. It was claustrophobic, and no matter how many times I shot at him, he would not go down. I couldn't keep a steady aim as he drew closer to me, as my hands were shaking in real life. I was trembling, and it made you lose hope, and you felt like such a helpless individual in that moment. So I just shut the game off, and couldn't sleep for the rest of the night. Come to think of it, I played way too many games that I was nowhere near mature enough or strong enough to handle, but that didn't stop me from playing them, of course. As much of a scaredy cat as I was, I couldn't shy away from playing horror games. But as a young child, I never expected Conquer to bring me one of the most haunting experiences I've ever had playing a game. Conquer's Bad Fur Day for the N64 is probably one of the most profound, wacky, and just overall solid games in the N64 library. I just had to play it when I was younger. Its art style and overall visceral edginess just called to me. But if you played Conquer, you probably know exactly what I'm going to talk about in this Ken Tober themed episode of State Soul. That's right. The spooky stage. With what feels like a complete tone shift in the game's usual dark comedy and hyper slapstick violence, we get thrown into an area where the soundtrack is stripped down to just the bare minimum. The sound design sets the tone of the stage, with only the sound of the insects chirping quietly, the ominous buzz of a slight breeze, and the steady stream of a desolate river. After swimming into an underwater cave that collapses behind him, Conker is forced to find a different route home. After finding an exit, you meet up with your good old uh, pal, what's his name, Def? Def is his name? Uh, yeah, yeah, Def. And he goes on another tangent about how much he hates cats. I guess I can't blame him seeing how they have nine lives and you're just trying to do your job collecting souls. But after dealing with his ramblings, you're greeted to the two giant doors that would send me into a traumatic shock for the next month or so of my life. After finding the latch that unlocks and opens the doors, you meet up with Death again, where he equips you with a shotgun and explains that there are undead up ahead. The rules are simple. Shoot them in the head. Nothing more, nothing less. Flashbacks ran back into my head. I don't know what it is about zombies, but they were one of my biggest fears growing up. Even though the existence of them aren't really plausible, the thought of them having this unrelenting strength, hunger for flesh and power in numbers, and just the scary reality that anyone, including myself, can turn into one, was just such a solid concept for horror. As you pass by the towering doors in front of you, nothing but a field of tombstones lie ahead. And just like that, the dead begin to rise crawling out of their graves with the sole purpose of killing anything that's alive. Playing this now as a grown-up still had me feeling squeamish, and with the pain of having to relearn inverted aiming all over again, it just made me panic more. Cause these guys aren't just slow walking zombies, no, they will speed up to grab you. You're a full course meal and it's kinda hard to eat when you've been buried in the ground for so long. The doors that were just open a few seconds ago are now locked shut meaning you're not escaping this easily. As I said earlier, shoot them in the head, because if you miss, you will get bitten. Shooting off their limbs won't stop them, because they'll just crawl towards you. But getting in those buttery smooth headshots took me a bit of time, which meant I got devoured a lot. Even with the scary vibe this area has, the writer still managed to inject humor by giving the tombstones absurd names like I see nuts, pea stain, arsehole, Mrs. I.P. Freely, Seaman, real mature guys, real fucking mature. But after finally conquering all the zombies around you and traversing the skeleton worm hill, you're greeted to even more fucked up shit. 
At the top of the hill lies a decrepit mansion filled with an ominous aura. What lies inside, you ask? Count Batula. Batula? I, I'm gonna go with Batula. This is the Count. He is obviously a vampire. I caught onto that quickly as a kid and had a hunch that he'd bite me or something. But I didn't expect I would be defecating on innocent villagers and dropping them into a meat grinder to feed this glutton. It's grotesque and absolutely absurd, but it's probably one of the goofiest parts of the stage and kind of lifts some of that tension and uneasiness I had beforehand dealing with the claustrophobic zombie section. After being bitten by Batula, Conker is transformed to a bat himself. Your goal is to feed the Count villagers. Feeding the Count villagers makes him expand, and after collecting enough villagers to grind up and feed him, the Count realizes just how much blood he's consumed. The rope snaps over him, and he falls into the grinder himself. Pretty ironic, huh? I guess that's his fault for coming up with such a horrible floor plan. Conker regains his body back, and sadly, that's not the only thing that comes back. Zombies are now sprinkled around the area, and you must collect three keys to unlock the entrance door and leave this place behind. At this point, the novelty of the area starts to dim and wear off for me as you're forced to platform and kill all these pesky bats as you unlock bridges to get keys from. It's a chore, and I won't go over it. You end up escaping by riding on the barrel and killing all the skeleton worms down the hill. And that's it. Even though the latter half of the stage was a drag for me going back, it still doesn't knock it from being such a compelling piece as a whole. The fears I had as a young lad still echoed playing it now as an adult. This stage is a change of pace, tone, and even expectations. It's a truly haunting experience.